it's almost like a get rich quick kind of thing. You don't really need to have a lot of money to do it. Mm -hmm. And um, unlike buying a house, which takes a lot of time, a lot of money, you can just acquire like 50 in one day if you really wanted to. You could sign 50 leases. Now you have 50 Airbnbs. You know, it's a very uh, easy way to scale. Right. Today we have a very, very special guest, Veronica Chow. Uh, she is one of my oldest friends from college. We, were, we started becoming very close during freshman year. Um, and you know, we stayed in touch over the years. And quite frankly, over the last, over the, just the last 12 months, to I think like 12, 13 months, you've made such a drastic career shift in your life and obtained what everybody in, in the country that I know wants to obtain financial freedom. And you did it in under 12 months, right? And so I want to bring you on at, not only because you're an inspiration to me, right? That people who do dedicate their time and effort to learn a craft and master it can obtain financial freedom. But uh, I think that your story is inspirational to anyone listening today. So Veronica, why don't you tell, <laughs> why don't you tell me in the audience, just a little bit about who you are and what and what it is that you do. A year ago, I was a kindergarten teacher. I taught for four years. And while I really enjoyed being there with the kids, I felt like um, kind of stuck because the harder I worked, um, I wasn't getting anything in return. I mean, it kind of sucks because, like, you get the fulfillment from the children, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. But um, as far as, like, compensation or success, like, you can't really obtain that as a teacher or really like a, a lot of fields right like I could be the best grocery bagger ever mm -hmm. but at the end of the day like you're that's all you're gonna do you're, mm -hmm. you know you you're can't, never gonna get financial freedom that way. yeah you can't or like it wasn't really about the financial freedom it was like more so like recognition or maybe like a promotion or a bonus or something right and like in that field you just couldn't um you couldn't level up yeah there's so, like a glass ceiling yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. I think a lot of people have that issue. And I just knew that I wanted to do a lot more and that I had more to offer than just your daily nine to five. Mm -hmm. So I did that for four years and I felt kind of stuck. Oh my God, I started a, a business selling stuffed animals. You remember that? I remember. Yeah. Um, when That's I was crazy. in college, like in my dorm room, I like made these stuffed animals and I didn't know what to do with all of them. So I put them on Etsy and like people started buying them. You had like them. a lot of them? Like, like so, 10 or like 100? No, I sold like to this day. I, I closed my shop. I made like 1,400, a little over 1,400 of these. Wow. And I made around like 60 grand. Like, That's awesome. Yeah. Like and selling it with my own two hands, you know. Oh, like, so you would actually things. make yeah, them yourself. Yeah, I'm sitting there in my dorm box room. Box them up and just sell them. Yeah, I box them up. I ship them out all over the country, all over the world actually wow. in different countries as well. That's smart, though, making them yourself. The profit margin on that was probably significantly it higher than if incredible. you're getting them from wherever, you know, putting your yeah. label on and selling it. And as, like, a teacher, too, I got discounts for, like, the craft stores and stuff. Uh -huh. um, and I asked David, I'm like, hmm, how do I, like, scale this? He's like, you can't. Because these things were so um, originally made, mm -hmm. um, I would make things that people can't buy in stores, which made them different. But because of that, it was really hard to, like – you know, wholesale it or um, mass produce them because they're so specific, yeah. you know? It'd um, be like an anime character on, like, Dragon Ball Z from yeah. the, the original yeah, 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 series. Yeah, yeah. Like, can you make this guy? Yeah, yeah like some would... random background character that nobody cares about. Like, somebody Something would super, want that. Something super, super specific. Yeah. Got it, okay. Yeah, so there was no way to scale that, so I tried. And I've always, like, had this, like, entrepreneur side of me, but I um, didn't really know how to... Like get there. What tell to him, tell what him to about implement the story of you it. selling crack um, when you were in high school. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> she got so I was like, I can make this up right now. Like, do you want me to like, play <laughs> along? Because I. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so you you're a teacher, right? Um, yeah. You got this glass ceiling. You've always had this entrepreneurial spirit in you. I remember, like. Both of us were absolute degenerates freshman year. Oh, yeah. Both oh, yeah. of us on academic probation. She I had a 2.0. <laughs> she transferred out, and I, I'm, like, seeing her every once in a while. She's like, David, like, 
I want to be a teacher. I want to be the best teacher. And she's oh getting God. like four point. She's getting four point every single semester. Yeah. And, and like, then she becomes a teacher, and I'm I'm in California, and she hits me up. She's like, "You're in California. You gotta hang out with me." So we get breakfast, right? And Veronica's like, "All right." So I'm at this point in my career where this just isn't working for me. Like, what do you think I should do? Right. Uh, I don't want to tell the whole story. Like, okay, the way you see it is like very different the way I see okay, it. Yeah. Okay, so it sounds really easy, right? Like, oh, we just get four point It was not easy at all. Like, um, you know how people are just like born smart. Uh-huh. Like that was not me. I was not born smart. I had a two I was on the volleyball team, so I, I thought I was the shit. Right. I was like, yeah, ah, yeah, yeah. like let's go party and like play some volleyball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, so then I had to transfer, quit the team in order to get this 4.0 because, you know, my parents would call me, how school? And I would just cry, and I was so embarrassed. So then I um, I was like, I got to get my shit together. And you got to make some sacrifices. Yeah. You can't just... You can't do it all. Get, yeah, you can't just do it. So I had to transfer schools, and I was like, if they accept me at Montclair State University, I swear I will dedicate my entire life <laughs> to making them feel happy that they accepted a person with a 2.0 GPA. So um, from then on, six credits transferred from Rutgers to Montclair because of that's how bad I did in school. And I took like 30, right? You have to take 15 per semester. Yep, I took yep. 30, but only six of them transferred. So I was like, I don't want to take an extra year of school. So I um, was like, I got to graduate in three years. And as a teacher, you have to student teach your last year. So my junior year of college I took 53 credits total wow and that took like you know I had to take seven classes every day all day yeah five in the summer I maxed out like all the classes I had to get the dean's approval because you're like not allowed to do that they don't Uh just like let people take that many classes you have to prove that you can like do it with a 4.0 so it wasn't just like that easy I like mentally wasn't right in the head I saw the school psychologist like didn't go out I stopped drinking for two years like you know, those are the sacrifices I feel like you have to make. Absolutely. But I graduated summa cum laude, top 2% of my class. Come on. And I was Come like, on. I'm going to be a teacher and make my parents proud of me because that's, you know, they care about the, the tangibles. You know, it doesn't matter, like, how you feel as long as, like, on paper you look smart. So, right. yeah, so um, I graduated and then I got a job right out of college because of this incredible resume that I <laughs> <laughs> I developed. And on my birthday of last year, I got into a car accident. Somebody rear-ended me, and I got a concussion that um, put me on disability for two months. And then when I returned, uh, they laid me off. So I was out of a job, and then I didn't know what to do. I was like, this is my chance to kind of do something new. And then... Um, I went to, like, 20 different job interviews. I didn't want to, but I felt like that's all I really had left. So I finally got hired as another kindergarten teacher at a school nearby. Great school. Um, The thing is, they didn't count any of my years that I did at my old school because the school was brand new, and apparently it's not, like, accredited. Mm -hmm. And it was pending accreditation, but it wasn't fully accredited. So they were going to pay me, like, $6,000 less, which isn't that much, but, like, I already felt like I was underpaid. All teachers are kind of underpaid. So, I don't know. It kind of sucks, right? I was like, am I going to, like, do this all over again and for less pay, too? So then they told me to sign the papers, and it was the first day of school. It was a Monday, first day of school, and I didn't want to because I was like, well, maybe we can, like, work something out and they can – Um, once they do get accredited, maybe they'll reimburse me or something like that. We'll work something out. So I didn't sign it and, um, didn't go to school first day of school on Monday. I just slept in and I think it was like nine o'clock and I texted David or he texted me and I was like, what are you doing? And he's like, want to get breakfast? And I was like, yeah, because I didn't go into school today. I have nothing to do. Oh, this is that day. Yeah, this was that day. And then we went, met up for breakfast and then they sent me a message. They were like, Um, are you going to accept this job you have till the end of the day? And then after our conversation, he kind of like gives me this motivation. Um, he kind of believed in me, which I never really did for myself, which was nice. And, uh, devised up a message to send back to them. That was like, no, thanks. Like we're going to decline your offer. And that was a significant moment for me that day. I put in my 30 days, um, for my apartment 
and I, yeah, I denied the job, put in my 30 days, and I was going to sell all my shit and move to uh, Michigan to start a business. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this is where shit gets, shit gets crazy. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Tell so, your side. I want to hear this. So that all happens. She's having a, f- a meltdown, honestly. She's like, what are you, crazy? Like, oh, are yeah. you sure you want me to say this? Like, I'm like, listen, <laughs> I... I can't promise that you're going to succeed, right? But knowing who you are, right, you have the same personality assessment as me, mm-hmm. uh, Enneagram 8, right? Uh, her PI is the same. I said, and I know that, like, whatever you've – she used to – when she was studying for, for a 4.0 in Montclair, she would, like, hold in her P to, like, study more. You can't tell people uh, whatever, that. Whatever, you know? I, like, didn't want to go to that. I didn't want to eat. I didn't want to go to the bathroom because I just, like, she I felt like those were it. distractions. Like, every time I would study and I would get hungry, I'd be like, dang it, like, now i got to waste fucking time to go eat. Uh-huh. That distracts me from my studying. It's that level of insanity that I know wins no matter what, mm-hmm. right? Like, that <laughs> I'm going to do this, it's going to win no matter what. Right? I had a conversation this morning. Uh, Bre- Brendan, right? He's like, I don't know if you should do that because you, it might go wrong. I said, Brendan, it's going to go right no matter what. We're going to win no matter it's what. Gonna it's going to win. It's not an option no, to it's not. It's like you can't it's even not. tell me that because even if this is a wrong decision, I'm still going to do it and it's still going to work. Yep. You know? And so I, I felt like she had that intangible, like, I'm going to get it fucking done. Yeah. Whatever whatever obstacle life throws in my way, I'm going to navigate. I'm going to pivot. It's going to fucking happen. It's simple as that. Exactly. That's it. Exactly. Yep. So I, I'm like, look, um, you've had experience Airbnb, right? Um, you've Airbnb one, one of your spare rooms in your apartment before. You're very good at design. Like, she literally crafted 1,400 unique dolls and sold them <laughs> on Etsy, right? She has a work ethic. I'm like, Airbnb arbitrage is a real thing. Yeah. Right? And she's already been, like, look, she's already, like, been following people on it. She's already had this passion. And she's like, look, this is kind of what I'm thinking already. And I'm like, I know a guy. <laughs> you need to connect with this guy. He's actually a coach. He's, he's hiring people. So I put him in touch. We won't say names, right? But I put, him, I put her in touch. And then, bro, within the week, she's fucking flies into Michigan, sold all her shit. She's living in Michigan now, right? Okay. I wish I could show you guys photos because the plane ride there, her cat's pissed all over her. Oh, right? my God. She, she's, uh, <laughs> she's laying on, like, this, like, blow-up bed. She's crying. She's like, David, I'm in the ghetto of Detroit <laughs> okay, living so, in a okay. fucking house. So you're thinking, like, okay, I moved to Michigan to start a business, right? Where do I live? Yeah. So this guy who is going to teach me how to – he's, like, a mentor, right? Yep. And it wasn't free. We paid him $10,000 to teach me how to do this. And when we visited him, he negotiated a deal with this guy to get a house, um, to rent the house. And um, he said, it's a completely empty place. It could be yours um, if you help decorate it and stuff. And not completely. He gave me 25% of all the houses that I would decorate for him and furnish. Great. Not just decorate, but you got to, like, order all the shit, right? There's a lot of things you got to, like, uh, keep in mind, like, pots and pans and fire extinguishers, like, um, smoke alarms. Um, From all that to bath bed linens mats, to everything. everything. Linens, pillowcases, like, all the shit, right? Yep. And then you have to decorate it on top of that. And so it's a lot. I have to um, get a smart lock installed, ring camera, right? It's it's more than you would think. Yep, yep. And so when I arrived, there was only, like, a couple items that I ordered. And I ordered, like, the, the necessities. It was, like... Um, a mattress and blankets and pillows. Normally they would have heat, but because it was a brand new place, like they didn't transfer the utilities yet. So it was freezing. My cat was like freaking the fuck out. I was just laying in this bed underneath the blankets, just crying my eyes out like fucking David. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, She's like, what did I let him talk me into doing? (laughs) I was so proud of how miserable she was. (laughs) I was like, this is what makes fucking warriors, yeah. Veronica. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah, he's like, you better document this shit. So, like, I have videos, like, to this day of myself just, like, sobbing. Like, David told me to record this. So, <laughs> here I am. <laughs> Great fucking content, man. That, yeah, that's, I mean, that's the stuff you look back to now, and you're like, oh, shit, like, 
I you, did you ever think then that you'd be here now? No, and I think those are going to be worth something one day. A hundred percent. You know, think of where you're going to think <laughs> of how you're going to feel when you're looking at those videos when you have thirty properties, not three. Right. right? When you're ten times further along than you are now, you're going to look back and be like, "Wow, shit! Holy shit! I'm making." That's awesome. Yeah. No. It's it's. So the, the story just gets, it's like a, it's like honestly like a drama. She gets, so you get coaching from this guy. Um, the deal was. We had an operating agreement. Yes. Okay. It was uh, for 25% for every um, place that I set up for him. And I had to go and get these deals. So I have to go call up landlords, convince them to sign this lease. And then I have to order all the furniture, um, get everything built, set up, ready to go, list it on Airbnb, and then once it starts making money, then I would get 25% of the net profits. Got it. That was the deal. And so at the time, David was like, you know, when you go to school, you pay them, you know, like tuition to teach you. Like, here, you're working. Um, yeah, you're not really getting paid, but like he's technically going to pay you eventually, you know, once these places start making money. And what deal would you ever get to that allows you to do that, right? So we thought it was, like, a great opportunity. Plus, I get so much experience not uh-huh. using my money, but, you know, using someone else's to yep. furnish these places. How many deals did you get in, la- in, in like, how you got 18 deals signed for him and furnished? No, no. I got 18 total for okay. the year, which includes um, Joseph's, yours, okay. mine, gotcha, gotcha, you know. Gotcha. So I got five for him in one month. So I was in Michigan for one month. And the reason why... Um, I worked so hard. Like, I didn't even sleep. I was constantly on the phone. 120 hours a week. Trying to get him more Airbnbs. To get five listed in one month, I think, is a lot. And it was because if I didn't have one ready to go, I wouldn't have a place to sleep. Because (laughs) once we, like, list it, I don't have anywhere to go. Because that's where I would be living until it's listed, you know? So then, like... And then you go to the next one. Then you the go to the next one. one. The next one. And yep, it was yeah, hard. Yeah. I had my cat. I got her litter box, her food, you know, and I, I was driving a fucking U-Haul because this guy wouldn't rent me a car. Yeah, and I had, like, no friends out there. I was hanging out with, like, the handymen, and, like, <laughs> they were very nice. And to this day, like, I would still keep in touch with them, like, you know, but it was, like, kind of sketchy, you know? And then the guy was like, well, why don't you go back to L.A., which is where you live, and then you can get me some deals out there, too, and then you'll be happier because, like, that's where you live. Your car's there. Yep. And then uh, I got him four units out there. Wow. Um, furnished, ready to go. Um, and this time he was like, well, we're not going to give you the 25%. We'll just pay you off. So, like, we'll just give you two grand per unit. Which, at the time, I didn't care, you know. I was like, whatever. But the reason, I think he was, like, smart about that because – the properties in um, L.A. are way more expensive. It's going to make way more money. So, like, the 25% in Michigan isn't Should 25% in L.A. Yeah. yeah. So, I'm, I met this guy, like, at a mastermind event. He was only there for one quarter and then never showed up again. But I had a couple drinks with him, you know. So, I was like, ah, oh, he's my boy, right? And um, every time I texted him or DM'd him, he was always responsive. Long story short, we shook hands. Veronica signed an operating agreement. He totally... We're not going to say names for a reason, but, like, brother, if you're hearing this. No. You, you, you know, you got to do the right thing, man. He was saying how they're all um, they're all at losses. You know, every month is a loss, yeah. right? So, like, oh, which isn't tr- I mean, mine are going crazy right now. They're doing so well. I don't know how anyone could get a loss. Like, right. I think you got to be, like, stupid, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, apparently, all of them that I've got for him are, are at losses. Now, just all of a sudden losing, all losing. Yeah, all out of nowhere, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it was, it was kind of like what... What started that was like she's like, look, like I set you up on like, like fifteen Airbnbs or something like that. Like I feel like I, I appreciate what you've done for me, uh, but I'm gonna go out and do my own thing, right? Like I'm only getting two grand a deal now in, in the areas I am. I'm just gonna go out and do it myself. And once that happened, he's like, all right, fuck off now. But now she's off on her own. She's 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 she doesn't need she doesn't need the investors. She's but I also don't company. need as much, you know. I feel like you guys like nice things. A lot of people like nice things. Like I'm cool with making um, more than what I was teaching, and now I'm just, like, chilling, not having to do anything, and I'm okay with that, you know? So you you so you so um, you started your you, – you officially left working with the gentleman, and um, and then you started gra- gra- grabbing your own deals. Right now, um, you have three kicking off. So I've won. The rent's, like, 3300 It'll make, like, around 7000 So net would probably wow. be, like, four, three or four. And then the other two are just simple one bedrooms, 
rents like twenty four fifty. It'll make around five grand. So um, those are like yeah. around two grand. So then, um, like nine grand a month. Yeah, yeah. it's it's pretty good. And I, a lot of people want to have these big properties, big mansions, um, and they'll make more money per property. But I think the bigger the it's like more liability, right? Yeah. The bigger the place, people throw parties and yep, stuff. Yep. But like a little rinky dink one bedroom, no one's gonna do anything. Like it's how very big of an simple. issue are you really gonna have, right? The, yeah. the big mansions never a problem. Any you know, you're gonna so have a twenty so grand problem all the yep. time. So you're clearing six figures, right? Um, and quite frankly, Veronica, I, I follow you on Instagram, so I know your lifestyle. This girl's going to <laughs> this country, and then she's in Germany, and then. I want to back it up though, real quick, because obviously, I obviously everybody in this room knows what Airbnb arbitrage is. Yeah. But can you kind of break it down for the people that are yeah, listening yeah. that don't fully understand what it is in like a simple form? Yeah. So Airbnb arbitrage. So you know how um, people buy a house and then they Airbnb it. Yeah. Very simple. This is like you rent a house and then you Airbnb it, which is really good because it's almost like a get rich quick kind of thing. You don't really need to have a lot of money to do it, mm-hmm. and. Um, unlike buying a house, which takes a lot of time, a lot of money, you can just acquire like 50 in one day. If you really wanted to, you could sign 50 leases. Now you have 50 Airbnbs, you know, it's a very, uh, easy way to scale. And yeah, because of that, yeah, you have to pay rent, but if, um, you do your, um, market analysis and everything, um, you should just profit, um, on each one. So those add up, you know, if you have like two or three, it's really not, that crazy, but if you have like ten or twenty, you know, you're making a lot of money every month, and yep. you don't have to do anything. You can just remove yourself from the situation. Um, the cleaners, they do it. If anything goes wrong, you got like a handyman that'll do it, and yeah, very low maintenance. Low maintenance. Yeah, high yield business with very little upfront cost. Mm-hmm. The the the, the issue that. The, it's the, everyone makes it out to be easy, but the fact of the matter is that she worked 120 hours a week for like a year and she learned the game, right? So you talk about she spent 5,000 hours in, over the course of one year just mastering the skill set. And so now when she looks back, she's like, oh, any dumb dumb can do it. <laughs> but like, dude, you got to call landlords. You need to be yep. scripted. You need to know how to sell yourself, mm-hmm. why this is a, a value add proposition for the landlord, right? Um, you got to be able to run your market analysis. Bro, I furnished two apartments. I helped Veronica furnish my two apartments in Jersey City. <laughs> that was a fucking nightmare. It was a living hell. I was ripping off boxes. I was, I was, I've never put, I've never done these things before. Putting the bed, like. Put, oh my God, the duvet. The, the, who, do, do, who was, who was, what's the duvet, you know? <laughs> put the duvet on so that, um, you know, the cleaners can take it off and then wash just the outside so they don't yeah, have yeah, yeah. to, like wash the whole blanket we like crawled inside of it to like match the corners up because we didn't know how to like yeah yeah get it, it all flat yeah nightmare right that's, that's so funny so like i i was thinking about like doing a little bit of airbnb arbitrage and I, I furnished one place and i was like this isn't for me i like making big clips one time one at a time i don't want to have to deal with furnishing mm-hmm. so this was like an acquired skill it's easy now Year now it's cl- now back, it's clockwork to you. Yeah, but it's also like very enjoyable for me. Like I love decorating shit, and like I won like every door decorating contest um, when I was a teacher. I would always go above and beyond, and now like I put in the same amount of work for my Airbnbs. I make them look beautiful. And um, what I started to do was um, take videos and yep. put it on TikTok, and like a couple of my videos blew up, and people love it. And I found um, interns who want to work f- with me, work for me for free. And um, they come and they help me, like, get furniture and they help me, like, design posters and um, build stuff. And they're so great. I'm very grateful for them. Uh, they're very reliable. Also, if you – so I get all my shit on Amazon or, like, Facebook Marketplace, and I post them on my TikTok. So I'm like, oh, this is where I got all my furniture. So then when people buy it, um, I get uh, an affiliate uh, whatever it's nice. called. Nice. Right? Yeah, like affiliate marketing. Yeah, yeah. Yep, so, like, yep. they pay me. And, like, all my furniture is linked on my storefront, um, on my That's so TikTok. smart. See, now you're, like, you already know what you're doing, right? You're going through the process. Yeah. So now you're starting to make money in all these other little areas. Yeah. Of, like, and TikTok, you know. too. I got paid 1600 for a video, a TikTok video, um, of me furnishing the guest room in my parents' house. Um, there's a lot of conflicting things. I want to dig in a little bit more. We're going to end this soon, but... I know because we're friends, right? And I know that 
you even going off and doing this in the first place, your biggest fear was the shame. Oh of, yeah. Of that you would receive from your parents saying, "What the fuck is my daughter doing?" Yep. She went to school. She's a teacher. She has a real job. Why doesn't she go find someone to marry and just settle <laughs> down and live a normal life, right? Yeah. And she and she her fear was like. She's like, oh, my God, my dad's going to judge me. My mom's going to judge me. She's telling me these things. I'm like, I'm sorry, but you got to go. Right? Yeah. Where, yeah. Are, where are you now with your parents? I honestly don't think I make enough for them to be that proud. Of, like, unless I'm, like, driving around a Lambo, you know, it's really hard for them to, you know, really. To be like, oh, shit. Like, yeah, because how yeah, can yeah, you yeah. see? Like, I no, feel I get like, it. Like, you know how I was like, I got to get a 4.0. I got to be a teacher. Like, those things are tangible. They can see that, right? Yeah. Like, they can't really see. Um, how much money I'm making, mm -hmm. right? It's like, but I think they can see that I don't have to work, you yeah. know, if I'm home more often, you know, and I'm not doing anything. But maybe they think I'm not making anything. I don't know, right? How would they never know? No, I know what you mean, though. It's got to get to, like, a certain level where, yeah, like, you're pulling up in the Lambo. Exactly, you got, you got yeah. the $10 million house on the water. Yeah, They're yeah, like, yeah. oh, wow, like, Veronica, holy shit. So, yeah. Veronica, what, what's the future for you? Um... I don't know. I think I'll get a couple more. I have one lined up right now that I'm just going to have to go back to L.A. for to set up real quick. Um, I don't know where I'm going to go, you know, but it's kind of cool. I feel like I can go anywhere. You yeah, know? no, that's awesome, though. You're smart because you're, you're, you're doing your thing, right? You have your properties, but then you're also, like, positioning yourself to be the go-to person, right? I want to start doing Airbnb arbitrage, right? I go get a property. I call Veronica. Hey, listen, can you can you do this? Can you get it ready to rent for yes. me? Yes. Yeah. Right? You could, maybe you're charging two grand, five grand a clip. Too. I yeah. like to do it quick. She's you a know? beast. Mm -hmm. She's yeah. a beast. So that's like a service then you're providing mm -hmm. as, you know, as like a whole of, that's awesome. I love yeah, that. Yeah, and this I get a lot of messages too on like Instagram of people wanting me to fly to Atlanta <laughs> or Iowa, you know, to do their stuff too. And I like, a part of me is considering that. It's not really not about the money for me. Like I'm just thinking it could be good content, not my money. I can just kind of like fuck around, make it look kind of cool, have more content. It's like fun. I have nothing else to do. Yeah. And they'll pay me too. Like why not? Why not? You know? Of course. At this point, I'm just trying to be happy. I'm a big all or nothing person. I'll either, like, get, like, as many Airbnbs and work really hard, or I'll just sit around and eat acai bowls and do nothing. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm I take trying you, I to take you like balance. acai bowl. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, like, it's a California yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to, like, find a balance now with just, like, maybe I'll do it if I feel like it. If not, like, like I don't need to, you know? That's awesome. That. That's amazing. Veronica, thank you so much for being honest and transparent and just sharing your story. Uh, if the people want to find you, reach out to you, wh wh where do they go? Um, it depends. They can find me on Instagram. I try not to annoy people with, like, some furnishing stuff on Instagram because it's, like, a lot of family and friends. Um, but my TikTok, I have, like, no filter. I'll just, like, rant about, like, my properties and stuff. You know, I didn't sh share my TikTok with anybody for, like, the – first like couple months because it's so cringy i hate hearing myself talk oh my god me too i never i listen to these podcasts but like i really don't like to no yeah, but you have right? a good podcast voice i know but i hate listen i hate with a burning passion listening to myself talk I yeah me too like when it echoes when I'm on the phone somebody i hang up immediately I'm like, <laughs> like, let me call you right back like it bothers me i don't know why i'm yeah. glad you think so though yeah so i don't <laughs> want to share literally that. pulled me aside and called me and said that guy john he's got a great Radio he voice. came into the mic all soft. He was like, John, you have <laughs> such a great podcast voice. Yeah, you you, like, you really? do. You do. <laughs> suck life into you, my man. <laughs> anyway, the people, where can they find you, Veronica? Um, on Instagram, it's Veronica X Chow. And then on TikTok, it's Veronica Chow 1. But, gotcha. you know, TikTok's kind of cringy, so don't take that too seriously. It's Chow C H A U. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Veronica, love you, girl. Thank you so much for, for coming on the podcast. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thanks for having me.